but as whites leave, some talented Americans are travelling the other way. And it's the ending of apartheid that draws them to the new South Africa, as Ian Ravage reports. A typical Friday night at Kippies in Johannesburg. Here in the new South Africa, black and white music fans rub shoulders in one of the country's top jazz clubs. Only not all of these people are South African. He's not, she's not, nor's he, and neither is the man they've all come to see. They're all Americans who've moved here in search of the African dream. Thirty-year-old James Provost came to Johannesburg from Atlanta two and a half years ago in search of a fresh start. When he arrived in 1995, he'd only $800 in his pocket. But in the new South Africa, he's grown rich, running one of Johannesburg's top nightclubs and representing up-and-coming African pop artists. Why don't you use a new hole? Today, he's moving into his new flat in Santan, one of Johannesburg's most exclusive suburbs. This is me and uh, Madiba Mandela. And it was just at his house, a little informal chat, nothing important. He just sat there and just talked about different things, yeah. nothing yeah. really major. Since the end of apartheid in 1991, hundreds of talented young African Americans have been emigrating to South Africa. Some come in search of new opportunities, others are attracted by a more spiritual desire to discover their African roots. For most, it's a bit of both. Well, I moved to Atlanta because Atlanta was, quote, uh, a black city, okay? And the more blacks are around, the more comfortable you feel. So, so me being here, you know, you got 400 and something million blacks. I can't help but feel a little bit comfortable. Morning, let's see slow. Morning, babe. Morning. 28-year-old Elizabeth Ridley moved here from New York to set up a regional office for her employer, but she hasn't found it easy. I think I was very naive when I came over here. After living in New York, I thought that crime here couldn't be as bad as it is in the United States. Um, but I have had experience with crime, nothing violent, but I've had my car stolen and my computer stolen. Um, my office at work has been broken into a couple of times. And I certainly know a lot of people who have been held up, carjacked, um, mugged, had their apartments broken into. So crime is a problem. Despite sharing the same ethnic roots as her new compatriots, Elizabeth's found that African Americans aren't always welcomed with open arms. Sometimes they are apprehensive towards black Americans and that they think that we're coming over here just to steal new opportunities that are opening up for the new South Africa um, and that you know we're in competition with jobs and that sort of thing. Some South Africans believe these new immigrants are coming here for all the wrong reasons. They come with unreal expectations and they think uh, some of them come up with ideas which, which, which is a call to, to, to Mother Africa thing which in many ways doesn't also pan out because you come to Mother Africa and you find the place looks like a, a little township in, in New York or in Boston, and, and there's no Mother Africa about it at all here. For many African Americans, coming to South Africa has been an opportunity to participate in the birth of a new nation. Their experiences may have been mixed, and many of their expectations unfulfilled, yet all agree that being part of the majority community has been an unusual experience. Ian Ramage, ITN. The driver of the coach which cracked a robot soccer league after a clash between humanoids on a miniature football pitch. Joe Keynes reports on the top game in the Far East's robot premiership. Real-life footballers have little to fear after the world's first robot soccer match played earlier this year in the Japanese city of Nagoya. The score in the top match, nil-nil. But that didn't dampen the enthusiasm of robot fanatics. As technology advances, modern robots are becoming skilled sportsmen. In this case, the sports machines take a turn at playing volleyball. In Japan, entertainment has long been a part of the appeal of robots. They're called on to do almost anything, for example, to serenade.
or just for laughs. At first glance, Waseda University's Mambo Dancing Robot may seem to have little practical purpose, but researchers here are trying to create machines which mimic human beings more accurately. But in the laboratory and in special showings, researchers have been testing the closest thing to an android so far. It can walk, brace itself when pushed, and even climb stairs. On a more practical note, the robot can also use tools. Designers hope it can one day carry out dangerous tasks in nuclear power plants or help treat contagious diseases in hospitals. The newest prototype of the humanoid robot has even been doing a bit of diplomacy, with its new, less imposing size helping to welcome visiting Chinese Premier Li Pong. America's first cat socks.